Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month, I thought we would take a look at running Plex servers on AMD-based mini PCs. I've been getting in a lot more of these to review lately. And viewers always ask about Plex performance. And I always say that these aren't always the best choice because they are not a supported hardware transcoding platform. However, as you'll see in a few minutes, this particular AMD Ryzen based mini PC is able to do hardware transcoding. And I thought I would show you how it works and maybe give you some ideas for trying things out on your own AMD based hardware. Uh, Plex will tell you that this is a uh, your mileage will vary scenario. It's not going to work this way on every AMD based device, but I was able to get it to work on this one. And I think it is definitely worth talking about because these are very powerful little servers, especially if you're looking to build out your own NAS or something like that. So now, before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. I should also add that the B-Link Mini PC here came in free of charge from the company a little while back for review. However, they are not sponsoring this video either, nor did they have any part in the editorial direction here. So let's get into this now and see how this Ryzen device works as a Plex server. Now this computer can run Linux or Windows, and of course the Plex Media Server will run and operate on both of those operating systems on this device. And right now I've got it streaming a movie, which I'm gonna show you at an angle here to avoid copyright stuff. Uh, this is a Blu-ray MKV file, and this is playing from this Plex server over to my phone via my Wi-Fi. And if we go into the control panel here and check out what's going on, we'll see that we are running this as a direct stream. That means that the Plex server is not changing the resolution or the bit rate. It is essentially delivering the file directly to the iPhone although it is doing a little bit of transcoding on the audio, but this is a software transcode, and because this computer is so powerful, if we scroll down here, you can see our CPU utilization is very minimal as this video is delivered to my phone. Now, we've talked in the past about hardware video transcoding, and when you may want to do that is when you're not at home and you want to stream something from your Plex server over a low bandwidth network like a 4G thing that you might encounter while you're out and about on your phone. And one of the strengths of Plex is that the software can do that transcoding, basically take that 58 megabit per second file that we're running here and squish it down to something that can run at two or four megabits per second. And if your Plex server supports hardware transcoding, it can do this with very minimal CPU usage and also be able to do that transcoding almost in real time. It's pretty quick when you've got a hardware transcoding session to get that video started at a lower bit rate, even though it is doing that transcoding on the fly. We've covered this topic in detail in the past. I will leave a link to that video down below to give you more of a background on it but basically it works best on an Intel-based PC. Even Intel PCs that are less powerful and a lot less expensive than this one. And the reason is the Intel chips have something called QuickSync built into them that Plex works with. And it is a very efficient video encoder. And Intel puts this technology even on their lowest end chips these days. So if you go out and buy a $150 mini PC, it might actually do better as a Plex server versus this AMD device. So let's take a look now at the impact of playing this movie back at a lower bit rate. So we have to transcode to do that. So here I am running this 1080p Blu-ray now at eight megabits per second, which means the PC has to do that conversion in real time in order for the movie to play back. And the movie's playing back just fine, at least to my eyes on the screen. And as you can see here, our control panel is indicating that we have a transcode going on here, but we don't have the hardware transcoding enabled right now. And if I zoom back out here and scroll down, you can see that our CPU utilization is pretty significant. So Plex on this eight core system is using about half the CPU resources just to play back this 1080p movie 
at the eight megabit per second bit rate, which means that I could probably only get one more playback going on right now with this computer. But I want to show you what my old NAS device in the closet can do with hardware transcoding. This one is, I think, about six years old now, uh, yet it has that quick sync built into the processor. Let's have a look. All right, so we've got the same movie, the same bit rate, just running off of a different server. So this is the control panel now from my WD MyCloud PR2100 NAS that we looked at a number of years ago. And as you can see, we are having the transcode take place here, but we've got a little HW next to these indicators on the control panel. And that tells us that it is doing this uh, through the hardware transcoder and not using software to do it. And if we zoom back out here and scroll down to the CPU utilization, you can see that this old Intel chip is only using about 15 or 14 and a half percent of its system resources now to do that transcoding because it is relying on the Intel QuickSync architecture to do it. Now, the other day I was browsing the support page for the transcoding feature because every once in a while things do get updated. And I noticed this section of the page here where it's saying that some AMD dedicated graphics might actually work as a hardware transcoder. So, Let's find out if it works. I went over to the settings here and clicked on hardware acceleration for our AMD Plex server. And I'm gonna pull that movie up now and set it at that eight megabit data rate and let's see if it plays back with the hardware transcoder now. So I have reconnected my phone to the AMD based server. I'm going to click on resume here to start playing the film back. Now remember on my network here, we default to direct stream. So we're getting the full 58 megabits per second out of that Blu-ray MKV. But what I'm gonna do now is go into the playback settings and force that eight megabit per second bit rate. So let's go over here to show all, go down to the eight megabits per second again. And now let's take a look and see if it plays back. Now you're gonna see some glitchiness here, a lot of glitchiness actually, but after a few seconds, it tends to settle down as you can see here. I don't wanna show you too much of the movie, um, but I've been testing this and I get that glitch for anywhere from five to 20 seconds. And then after that goes away, it plays back fine. And if we go to the control panel here, you can see that this is transcoding in hardware. The Plex server is able to work with the onboard AMD graphics here, and it's encoding this video with hardware and also uh, decoding it from the original Blu-ray. And we'll zoom out here and we'll take a look at the CPU utilization. And just like on that uh, Intel chip, you can see now that we're only using about 8%, actually in this case, 7% of the CPU uh, versus almost 50% when we were using the software transcoder. So although this AMD configuration is not one of the supported hardware transcoding platforms, it is in fact working as one, as you can see here. And this one is running with an AMD Ryzen 4800U processor. I've got the latest drivers installed on it. So this configuration works but yours may not. And that is why they're saying your mileage here will vary. So if you have an AMD configuration like this, give it a shot and see what happens. You might be surprised and you might be able to get a little bit more usage out of your AMD mini PC server than you thought you might. But again, it may not work for you at all. You might see more glitching versus what we saw. So give it a shot and see what happens and maybe leave a comment down in the comment section uh, to share your experiences with others. Now, I also wanted to touch on briefly some of the other things that uh, Plex supports for hardware transcoding. This again comes from their support page. So by default, it's going to look for the Intel QuickSync hardware, but if it doesn't find that hardware, it will use an NVIDIA encoder from an NVIDIA GPU. So if you had an AMD Ryzen-based gaming PC, for example, that had the Ryzen processor but an NVIDIA GPU on board, it will make use of those NVIDIA encoders for video. Now, my recollection is, is that the consumer NVIDIA GPUs will support three simultaneous video encodes, and after that, you're out of luck. So it looks like, I think, on the consumer cards, you'll get about three simultaneous streams but you'll get more with the Intel 
uh, quick sync configuration depending on the processor. And then after that, it defaults to the software encoder. On the Mac OS, we discovered a few months ago that the M1 Macs do hardware transcoding through the Rosetta layer there. That was a pretty fun video to put together. On Android, at the moment, I think the only Android device that supports hardware transcoding is the NVIDIA Shield. And if I'm mistaken, let me know down in the comment section. But there are some uh, options on the Android side if you do go with the NVIDIA device. And here on Linux, you can see it kind of runs in the same process. It goes to Intel first and then rolls over to NVIDIA. But I was pretty surprised to see that this mini PC, at least, was able to get hardware transcoding to work successfully. And it's been playing back here now for the better part of an hour, and it's still going just fine. The sound is perfect. Everything is working now just as well as it does on my Intel-based devices. But again, as Plex says, your mileage may vary. So if you've got one of these AMD chips kicking around and you were reluctant to use it as a Plex server, my advice is to download the latest drivers, get the latest version of the Plex Media Server, make sure Windows is up to date. I'm running Windows 11 on this one right now, and give it a shot and see what happens. It might actually work for you like it is for me. And it's always fun to have more options for Plex servers. I'm not quite ready to recommend these as Plex servers yet, just because the mileage does vary here, but it's great to see that there is some progress in expanding hardware transcoding on non-Intel devices. That is going to do it for this one. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman, Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. Don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.